sitting. You would be sitting there looking, feeling sorry for yourself. But God is good. He's been amazing to you. He's been wonderful to you. He's been your lifter. He's been your glory. I wanted to give 10 people a high five and as you give them a high five tell them my God is greater my God is greater my those of you are watching us by television we welcome you to Jubilee Christian Church we are here excited celebrating the goodness of God for indeed God has been so good to us we are here excited because Jesus has given us a new year he has opened for us a new page and it doesn't matter what happened in 2014. We have confidence that in 2015, it's going to get better. We are going to go higher. We're going to go deeper. We're going to walk in things we've never walked in before. And if you're watching me by television, I wanted to hook up with what God is doing here in JCC as you celebrate the doing of God. One more time before we sit down, give God a crazy praise and a crazy shout. As you sit down, as you descend to the comfort of your seat, I want to welcome to the service my very good friend from Dallas, Texas. I walked in and saw them and I was so excited. I'm going to give you a hug after the service. Mr. and Mrs. Gaduka are here. Please stand up on your feet. Mr. and Dr. Gaduka are here. Please put your hands together all the way from Dallas, Texas. Come on, all of, come on, put your hands together and appreciate them all the way from Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Dallas Texas. We are looking forward to a good time of, of, of rejoicing and celebrating God together. I wanted to greet your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, this greeting is not for me. Tell them this greeting is from Pastor Allen and Kathy. And they would like to let you know that they love you dearly. Thank you so much for those who are watching us by television. I have about 35 minutes, but that's enough to bring to us the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 5, I wanted to go quickly there. Put your finger there and then turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. I'm going to do a quick job because of time, but I'm okay. We are in good time. Somebody say amen. I said somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says in Luke chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, that he stood by Lake Gennesaret. Help me with the thing. That he stood by Lake Gennesaret and he saw two sheep standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed that he would thrust out from the land. And he sat down and turned the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, uh, <laughs> when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch or for a drought. And Simon answering said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at the word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net break. And they beckoned unto, unto their partners, which were on the other ship, that they would come and help them. And they came and filled both the ship so that they began to sink. I want you to kindly go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9 to 15 quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9 to 15. I'm going to go quickly. You can follow me on screen. As it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared to, for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of man. Now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely 
given to us of God. Which things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Spirit teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But in the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually designed. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Brother, please help me with my laptop. It's okay. I think I can, I can handle this. Verse, I wanted to go to the book of Psalms 107 quickly. Psalms 107 verse 23 and 24. I have to say the copyright of the person who gave me this was none other than my wife. The Bible says, They that go down, verse 23, They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, they see the works of the Lord and wonders in the deep. But you can give me my towel. We have received from God this year of 2015 a clarion call that has come from heaven that we should go into deeper depths in God. Somebody say amen. We have received a clarion call from heaven that we should depart from the murky waters. We should depart from the murky waters, the shallow muddy waters of powerless religiosity and begin to delve into the deeper depths of God. We need to get into deeper depths in God. And Pastor Lars did a fantastic job last Sunday as he laid down the foundation for what I believe was the voice of God for 2015. We are going deeper in God in 2015. Can I get an amen? I want you to agree with me by lifting up your right hand and, say, and making this confession. I want you to say, I'm going deeper this year than ever before. Come on, make a faith confession. Make, make, say, say, I'm going deeper this year than ever before. We have received a clear and call from the voice of God, from the, from the mouth of God, that this year of 2015, we should go deeper than ever before. We are moving from the shallow, murky, nebulous water of shallow Christianity and shallow religiosity. And I want to believe by the grace of God that we are stepping into some, some deep stuff in 2015. Can I get an amen? In the Bible says in the book of Psalms 47 and 42 and verse 7, the Bible says in the book of Psalms 42 and verse 7, the Bible says that deep color than to deep are the noise of thy water sprouts, all thy waves and thy billows have gone over me. Deep color than to deep. That is to say, there is a place where deep things of God begin to call for the deep things that are in you. Let me say that again. There is a place where the deep things of God demand a calling in from the deep things that are in you. That is to say, when you begin to allow that depth of, uh, that is in your spirit to connect with the deep things of God, then you begin to experience the overflowing power that is available in God. Somebody say, Amen. There is a place where God wants to take you that you've never been before. There is a place where God wants to take you that you've never been before. The, uh, let me say that again. There is a place where God wants to take you that you've never been before. Somebody say amen. And this year you're going there. It's a deeper place. I said it's a deeper place. And this month I'm going to be looking at that deep place because I'm trusting God. That you're going to get into a place where rent doesn't become an issue. Where paying school fees doesn't become an issue. Where what you're wearing doesn't become an issue. Where what you're going to eat doesn't become an issue. But not only are you going to get blessed, but you're going to be a blessing to a generation. Somebody shout amen. When you begin to look at the text, because of time, I'm going to go, go quickly uh, to the text that is, is before us tonight, uh, this morning. The Bible says that Jesus, Jesus comes to the, to the lake in Nazareth with a multitude that is pressing to, on him to hear the word. And the Bible says that when they get to the lake in Nazareth with his multitude, he finds that there are two boats that are parked or have been removed from the water and are parked and the fishermen are washing their nets. Let me tell you the microphone, please. They are washing their nets. And when they are washing their nets, they are not washing their nets because they have been successful the previous night. They are washing their nets because they have not been successful. They are washing their nets because things have, been, have not been good. They are washing their nets because things have not been easy. And so when Jesus comes, uh, he finds that they had given up. They, they have quit. They have, they have surrendered. They are getting ready to pack up and go home after an, an unsuccessful night or uh, the whole night of fishing. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to somebody here today that probably in 2010 you caught nothing. In 2011 you caught nothing. In 2012 you caught nothing. In 2013 you caught nothing. In 2015 you caught nothing. The promotion you are waiting for came to nothing. The lifting you are waiting for came to nothing. The favor you are waiting for came to nothing. The open door that you are waiting for came to nothing. 
other thing. But I sense in my spirit uh, that in 2015, uh, by the grace of God, the things that have been uh, delayed in 2015 are going to come through this year. Somebody shout amen. They have toiled all night. They have labored all night. They have tried the whole night. But the more they tried, the more they didn't succeed. Then Jesus comes into the scene. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus doesn't come to you when you're on top of the mountain. Many times he comes and finds you when you are in the deep valley. When you're, nobody wants to look in your direction. That is when God shows up in your life. And for those who are watching me by television and those who are listening to me, if everybody has turned away from you, get ready because God is about to show up in your life and show you off. God will not begin with you when things are good. God will wait until things are good crazy that's when he shows up and does, does something that only he can do why because if he did it when somebody when he did it before the whole thing has come to an end you would think that it was your power and you think it was your ability but God will wait and I know that I'm talking to somebody here today God will wait until things are crazy when everybody has walked away from your life when the landlord has locked the door when the contracts have fallen through when nothing is working out that is when God will step in and ladies and gentlemen when God steps in he doesn't leave you the same. Somebody say amen. We see here we are going to deeper depths in God, Pastor Morris. I really sense it in my heart that somebody's about to get something that they've never believed they can be able to get. They've never believed they can be able to walk in. If you agree with me, shout, shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. And so when Jesus comes to the boat, he finds the fisherman have given up. And what does he do? He asks them, please give me the boat. I push it a little bit into the water because I want to preach to the multitude. Now, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the thing that I've seen and I want to begin to write now notes right now Jesus will always begin where you are Jesus will always begin where you are when he asks for the boats is because all he needs at that time is a boat Jesus will always begin where you are he doesn't begin with what you don't have he will always begin with what you have give me my Bible he will always begin with what you have ladies and gentlemen let me just say, share something and tell you what you have right now don't minimize it what looks like is it's not important can be something important in the hands of God. If you can be able to hand it over to God, God is able to take it and do something with it. The Bible says uh, in the book of in, in the book of Zechariah 4:10, the Bible says, "Do not despise the days of your small beginning. Stop despising where you are. Stop despising the husband that you have. Stop despising the wife that you have. Stop despising the children that you have." Ladies and gentlemen, God is able to take exactly what you have and begin to do something good with it. Many times you're looking outside and looking at what other people are, are enjoying out there. You're looking at Pastor Kuna's church, or you're looking at Pastor Kuna's house, or you're looking at uh, Pastor Kathy's decent. And, and this other person and you're looking over at your neighbor and wondering how much they have but ladies and gentlemen God will never use your neighbor's stuff uh, to bless you God will use what you have to bless you and that's why I love what Pastor Maury said this morning she said the widow had only two mites uh, but if you have two mites that is enough you can begin the cycle of victory beginning with where you are I don't know how many of you watch this but I watched something on K24 the other day and I saw this man and I know I'm on KTN but let me just say I watched it on the other the other guys hey amen and this I was just passing through I, I was just I wasn't staying there so please just I was just passing through but I saw something that is amazing this guy has been selling maize He's, um, he's been selling maize. And I think he said he started selling maize from 1983 or 93. I didn't hear very well. But he said every day he used to save 200 bob. Every day. And after all those years, guess what? He's now bought a brand new matatu. 200 bob every day. He has a brand new matatu. Why? God doesn't need much to turn around your life. He can take the irrelevant thing that you have and make it good. That is why you shouldn't complain about what you have. Begin to celebrate what you have. If you have a Sunday 8 certificate, good. If you have a Form 4 certificate, good. If you don't even have a degree, good. Begin where you are. God will begin with you right where you are. Do not despise. Do not minimize. That's why you can't let people write your story yet. Don't let them, don't let them write your obituary. Don't, let them, don't allow them to conclude for you. How can you conclude for me when I haven't even started the best is yet to come. I sense that God is just beginning with me. He's just beginning with me. Ladies and gentlemen, I came to tell somebody here today that the reason why God has given you a new year 
is because he wants to start something new in your life. Somebody shout amen. amen. And he comes by the lake in Nazareth. And he finds his two feet. He finds two boats. And he tells Peter, give me your boat. And, and he goes into the boat and begins to preach. He begins to send forth the word. Because every turn around, write this down, begins with the word from God. Every turn around will always begin with the realm of word. God will never begin something in your life until he has sent his word. It is a word that is sent from the mouth of God that has power to break every calamity. The word of God has, to, has the power to change every situation in your life. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, don't be quick to sit under air, under any preacher that is just doing gimmicks and not preaching the word of God. If you're not preaching the Bible, I have no time listening to you. I want a word that has come from heaven because the Bible says that he sent his word and his word deliver, healed them and delivered them from every destruction. The Bible says that the word of God when it leaves the mouth of God, it doesn't return to him for it, but it comes, it makes sure that it accomplishes the purpose for which it was sent. I came to announce to somebody here today, as you sit under this word, your life is about to change. I said your life is about to change. That is why you can't sit there and begin to let your mind wander. Bring back your mind from the supermarket. Bring back your mind from where it's going. Come back and listen to what the preacher is saying. Because in my mouth is a word that is able to break loose and to usher to your place of destiny. Somebody say amen. I have a word for you. I said, I have a word for you. If you agree with me, lift up your hand and say, preach it, man of God. I'm listening. I have a word for you. Are you listening to me? If you agree with me, lift up your hand and say, amen. I have a word for you. I said, I have a word for you. And when Jesus sits on that boat, what is he doing? He is preaching to the multitudes and giving them a preaching. He's preaching to everybody. Thousands and thousands of people are listening to me, to him. And he's preaching the word of God. And like, like now, right now, I'm preaching. And there are millions and millions of people that are watching me by KTN. There are, million, there are thousands of people here watching me. 5,000 people sitting here listening to me this morning. And that is what Jesus was doing. He was preaching to the thousands. And he was preaching to the multitudes. But suddenly, Pastor Morris, after he finished preaching to the multitude, he turns to Peter. He turns to Simon. And he has a word for Simon. He has a specific word for Simon. And today in the name of Jesus, may there be a word that comes in your direction. May you hear a word that is just tailor made for you. In the mountains of the people, may there be a word that is coming for you. Somebody shout amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Lift up your hand and say, I'm ready. I know I'm preparing you because today I sense there's a word that is coming in your direction. He turns to Simon and he says, Simon. Simon, now he's not talking to the thousands. Now he's not talking to the multitude. Now he's talking to one person, Simon. He's not talking to everybody. He's talking to Simon. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how many people are here, but Jesus is not talking to everybody. Not only he's speaking to you today, but rather he's speaking to you right now. Those of you are watching me by television, it's not by accident that you're watching me today on KTN. It's because there's a word that is coming from the mouth of God, coming in your direction. Somebody say amen. And he says, Simon. And I want to lay a foundation here. I'm coming back in this in a little while. He says, Simon, I want to do something. I want you to take the, the, the nets and the, the boat. Get into the boat. And then this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to go into the deep. I want you to go into the deep. And then when you get there, when you get into the deep, there's something I wanted to do. I wanted to throw down your nets. When you get there, throw down your nets. And then number three, when you get down there, when you throw down the nets, something is going to happen. You are going to catch a multitude of fishes. Now listen to me. And I want you to write this down. Every time God is sending you to the deep, it's because there's something he wants you to get. God doesn't send it to the deep because he, he has nothing else to do. God doesn't send it to the deep because there's nothing else he has to say to you. Every time God is sending it to the deep, uh, it's because there's some stuff that, they are, that are in the deep that you can't get into the, in the shallow waters. Uh, I don't know what came for here today, but I want to announce to you, there's some fish in the deep uh, that will never swim, swim in the shallow waters. Uh, there's some things in the deep uh, that it will never be able to get in worse. I want to write that down. I want to say every time God is sending me to the deep, it's because he has something for me he has something in the deep for you he says Simon pick up your nets go into the deep and then I began to read the book of 1st Corinthians chapter 2 and something struck me so strong something hit me so good 
in the book of first Corinthians chapter 2 the Bible says I has not seen ear has not heard. in fact it starts by saying but it is written it is written why is it written it is written in the book of Isaiah that I has not seen ear has not heard the things that God has or neither has it entered the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him that was written by Isaiah in the Old Testament but then when Paul begins to write he doesn't stop there because you see in the Old Testament Mr. Nganga I could not see ear could not hear neither could it enter the heart of man the things that God has revealed to them has kept for them that love him but when Peter when Paul begins to write it he adds on and says that is in the Old Testament now in the New Testament the things that ear could not hear the things that I could not see the things that could not enter the heart of man in the New Testament there's something that is happening there is a revelation of those things they are revealed to us by his spirit ladies and gentlemen I want to announce to you that there is a revelation that is taking place in the new church in the 21st century church of the things that God has prepared for you the Bible says of the things somebody shout things come on somebody shout things there are things that God has prepared for you favor things opportunity things open door things these are things vehicle come on help me now vehicle things wife things children think guess what they'll be prepared for you before the, the creation of the earth god has already had already made provision for you that is why ladies and gentlemen you are not praying for god to do it you are praying for those things to be manifested in the time of god I think you missed what I said. You are not praying for God to give you a wife. The wife, when you are born a few years later, the wife was born. What you're praying for is for her to manifest and to show up in your life. Then the Bible says what? But, the, but God has revealed them to us. How? Somebody said by his spirit. The reason why you have the Holy Ghost is not so that you can make a lot of noise. I'm helping somebody here today. The reason why you have the Holy Ghost is also that you can shout the whole night and your neighbors can't sleep. The reason why you have the Holy Ghost is so that you can begin to tap into the mind of God to know what God has for you. Can I submit to you? And I wanted to hear me clearly. This business of dating five girls before you know which one is yours. Let me clear the air and I know that tomorrow I'll be on the blogs but I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to preach like I don't care. This thing of dating five girls before you know which one is yours. Breaking this one's heart and breaking this other one's heart and then getting your heart broken. That is not of God. The thing of God is going into the secret place of the most high God and telling God, God, show me my wife. And when you come to the house of God, we come with your antenna ready to connect with your wife in the spirit. I say, let me just say it. There's a lot of worldly things that you've taken and accommodated in the church. And you're saying, Bishop, shouldn't I go for a date? Help yourself, do whatever you want. But I came to tell you there's a better way. The Spirit of God can begin to reveal to you, Pastor Patrick, the woman of your life. She may not look like a Coca-Cola bottle, but you're not looking for the container. You're looking for the content. I don't care how she looks on the outside. As long as she has God on the inside, that is what you're looking for. By the way, the container doesn't remain the same after a few babies and after a few ice creams and after a few planet yogurts and KFC the things will begin to shift there will begin to be a change and the woman that was a coca-cola bottle suddenly she's now size 16 so if you are looking on the outside you will get disappointed but I did see Pastor Kathy on the outside there is something in my spirit when I saw her she's looking good but I didn't catch her in the physical I caught her in the spirit that is why I'm not crying that is why I'm not crying that is why I'm having 
a good time because she came from God. The blessing of God, it maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. Ah, come on, somebody. Tell your neighbor, go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper. Stop looking for a wife. Looking at the hairstyle. Looking at the curly kit. Looking at the size. Looking whether she's carrying my diabs. My diabs are not enough. My legs are not enough. The hairstyle is not enough. Come on, somebody. I don't know where I came from. I tell you, but never go deeper. Deeper, deeper, deeper. You need a woman of God. You need a man of God. He may not be driving a BMW, baby. But if you can be able to connect with what God has for him, very soon he'll be owning the BMW franchise. like I feel it. We have a generation that is looking at Kim Kardashian and all this nonsense. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not of God. You are a child of God. You need to rise up in the spirit and begin to connect with God to show you exactly what he has for you. Because I promise you, after a few years, the hair falls off, the boobs go down, the Madiaba shrinks. I don't know where came from. The hips move a little bit. I, I'm going to tell you the it is on national television. So if that is what you're looking for, you will be disappointed. But I went deeper. The neighbor go deeper. I went deeper. And I got a woman of God. I got a powerhouse for God. And today I'm rejoicing because I didn't look at the lips, hips, or fingertips. <laughs> For the spirit is searching for the deep things. I don't need a shallow chick. I don't need a shallow woman. I don't need a shallow husband. I need a deep woman of God. I need a deep man. When he begins to prophesy, I hear God. I don't care whether he has rasters or he has a kippara or he's driving a Range Rover or driving a Volkswagen. I need deeper. Somebody touch a never name deeper. You gotta get deep in God. I need a deep job. I need a deeper ministry. I need a deeper wife. I need to meet some deeper children. Somebody shout deep. <laughs> Sit down for two minutes. But the problem, Pastor, Pastor David, is this. How can you get deep when you're shallow? How can you get deep when you pray for five minutes? How can you get deep when you've never fasted? You fast from 8 a.m. to 11. And then you break the fast. Lord, I tried. The devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. How can you get deep when you don't even show up for encounters? How can you get deep when you don't even study the Bible? You'd rather be on Facebook the whole night than putting your face on the book. You need to put your face on the book that is called the Word of God and watch your life change. In 2015, I'm not even going to give you a devotional. A devotional is too shallow. You're going to sit there with the Bible and read the whole of Ephesians three times. Then go to Philippians and read it three times. Go to Colossians and read it three times. First and second Thessalonians and read it three times. Why? Because we are getting deeper. And in that place of deep, you're going to get your wife. You're going to get your job. You're going to get your promotion. You're going to get your favor. You're going to get your open door. Who did that come for here today? This is what God can give you. And ladies and gentlemen, when God gives it to you, it's beautiful. It's amazing. When God gives it to you, it comes exactly fitting your size. The Bible says, for the spirit searches for the deep things of God. Listen to me. Get deep in God and you will start to encounter stuff you never even imagined existed. I gave you the example last Sunday when we all went off air. 
And I'm going to give it to you again so that those who are on air can hear me. When we went to Mombasa the other day, we, went, we took a boat and we went into the deep. And when we went to the deep, we put on the snorkeling things in the deep, in the reef at the marine park. And Pastor Bart, we started to swim and to look at the fish, beautiful fish, long fish, small fish, schools of fish that were moving in the same direction. Beautiful fish. Awesome fish. Guess what? Those fishes were not in the swimming pool. They were not in the shallow. They were in the deep. Now, we left a big crowd in the shallow waters. Because there are people who do not believe that there is water more than the one they shower with. They can enter into any more water than the one they shower with. They have only two things for water. Drinking and showering. But when you're tr we went in there and we began to see things that we couldn't see in the shallow. By the time we left there, we were giving the experience to people that we left in the shallow. We were telling them there are things in there that you can't see here. And many of them were looking at us like, mm -mm, I ain't going in there because I cannot go to any water that is beyond my ankle. But I came to tell somebody, if you want a deeper experience with God, you have to exit from your mundane shallow living the mucky muddy water of compromise and religiosity and go in deeper there because there are things that are out there that you are, can only be accessed when you walk away from your shallow Christianity and get into deeper things in God somebody say amen and then Paul writes and says for what knows man the th what, what, but for what man knoweth the things of a man except the spirit that is of a man that is to say it's only me who knows what I carry. It's only me who knows what I have. But then it's only the Spirit of God that knows what God has for you. That's what we're saying. And then he says, for the spiritual things cannot be naturally designed. Many people are looking for spiritual things in the wrong way. You cannot get your spiritual things by sight. You cannot be, be able to get them by touching. You are going to have to walk away from mundane, uh, shallow Christianity and get into deeper things in God. And today I've come to announce to somebody, I'm holding you by the hand. And I'm dragging you with me in 2015. And we are getting into deeper things in God. Can I get an amen from somebody? In this year of 2015, you shall know how the presence of God feels like. You've heard other people say the presence of God, but this year you shall hear, the, you shall feel the presence of God for yourself. In this year of 2015, you shall know the favor of God for yourself. In this year of 2015, you shall be able to walk in the supernatural blessing of God for yourself. In this year of 2015, I want to announce uh, that you shall be able to be a landlord and you shall own property. I know right now you may not look like anything is happening in your life, uh, but I've come as a man of God to let you know that when you get into the deeper, you shall be able to receive what God has for you. Somebody shout amen. Let me go back to the text, Pastor David. And the Bible says that Jesus tells them, go to the deep and launch up and la la let your nets down. And the Bible says that Simon says, Jesus, we've been toiling the whole night. We've been trying the whole night. We've been doing this the whole night. In fact, Peter, I'm sure Simon was wondering, Jesus, why can, how can you tell me how to fish? I am the fisherman. I, I, you don't know how, the, how these things work. But he says, nevertheless. Somebody shout, nevertheless. He says, nevertheless, at your word, we shall do it again. Today, I come to ask somebody, I know you've tried it in 2015, 2014, in 2013 and 2012, uh, but I wanted to put at nevertheless, uh, because in 2015, uh, that which didn't work in 2014 shall work out in Jesus' name. Uh, as you go to deeper things in God, I want to announce that the things that didn't work, uh, that delay of 2014, uh, that disappointment of 2014, uh, that discouragement of 2014, uh, it was broken on 31st of December, and in 2015, uh, God is giving you a new beginning. Somebody shout amen. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Micah chapter 7 and verse eight the bible says my enemies do not laugh at me when i'm down for my god shall pick me up i want to announce that in 2014 you may have failed you may have flopped you may have been discouraged but in 2015 i want to prophesy the lifting hand of god is coming your way somebody shout yes you shall be lifted by god not only shall you be lifted up you shall be set on the pinnacle you shall be set on the mountaintop where people cannot ignore you i feel like prophesying to somebody 
People have ignored you. People have not looked in your direction. But I want to announce in 2015, people shall notice you. They shall listen to your music. They shall read your books. They shall come to your concert. They shall come to your church. Lift up your hand and shout, yes. They shall buy your product. I promise I 2015 shall be your year of fulfillment as you go into deeper depths in God. Somebody shout, amen. Clap your hands and give God praise for sorry, for, for one minute for that prophetic word. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. And this is how I want to wind up this. Pastor Lydia, when they go into the deep, they let down the nets. And guess what? The fish that wasn't there during the night. In spite of the fact that they're even watching the net. Because a word has gone forth. Somebody say a word. Somebody say a word. Because a word has gone forth. Guess what? The fish began to swim in the direction of the nets. Why is that? Why, 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 why is that important? And I want to wind up with this and let you know the reason why Jesus was getting them from the comfort zone is because he could tell what was waiting for them in the deep and they couldn't get it when they were in shallow waters. I want that to ring in your spirit as you leave this place. The reason why God is sending you into the deep brother Steve is because there are some things you will never experience in any other location but the location called the deep. There are places you will never get. There are doors that will never open. There is favor that you will never walk in. There is opportunity that will never come in your direction until you walk away from the shallow waters and find yourself in the deep. I want to wind up with this and I want this to ring in your spirit. There is a harvest waiting for you but that harvest is not in the shallow waters there is favor waiting for you but that favor is not in shallow waters there is a breakthrough waiting for you but that breakthrough is not in the shallow waters there is a visa waiting for you but that visa is not in shallow waters there is a wife waiting for you but that wife is not in shallow waters there is a baby waiting for you but that baby is not in shallow waters God of heaven I came to announce to you there is some stuff that God has laid up for you you but those things are in the deeper and today I came to tell you I want you to dare God in 2015 and make up a mind and make up a declaration that in 2015 I am going to go where I've never been I'm gonna pray like I've never prayed I'm gonna study like I've never studied I'm gonna forgive like I've never forgiven I'm gonna sow seed like I've never sowed seed I'm gonna be faithful in my tithe I'm gonna be faithful in my church I'm gonna be faithful in whatever I do I dare you in 2015 to dare God and go a little bit deeper and I promise you by August, October somewhere in September you shall be rejoicing because the God of heaven would have met you in the place called the deeper. Now put your hands together and give God a praise because it's going to happen. So when they got to the place called the deepest part not only did they catch a drought for themselves, but they got such a drought that they started to beck on other people to come and help them. I decree that what God is about to do in 2015 for you shall not just be for you, but your neighbors shall experience the blessing of God because of you. You are going to call people to come and help you. You're going to call your friends to come and help you. You are not going to only pay school fees for yourself, but you're going to pay school fees for other people. You're not going to only pay your own house rent, but you're going to build houses for people who don't have own houses. I promise that in 2015, you shall be a lifter of broken hearts. You shall be a mender of broken walls. Not only is God going to do it for you, but I decree that God is going to make you to do it for other people. If you agree with me, shout yes! yes. So you're watching me by television. We have to close. We love you. If you're not born again, pray this simple prayer after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you. I am a sinner needing mercy. Forgive me come into my heart be my Lord be my Savior and be my God say this prayer say from this day forward I will follow Jesus Amen if you pray that prayer 
call the numbers on the screen. There's somebody waiting to hear from you. If you need healing right now, I send the word of healing. Be healed in Jesus' name. If you need deliverance, be delivered in Jesus' name. But I challenge you, in 2015, hear me. Let's go deeper. Go to a place where you've never been. Don't be religious. Don't be religious. Forget about being religious, having a name of a church and saying I belong to this church or this other church. It's not about that. It's about you having an experience with God just for yourself. God bless you. We hand you over to Tukuza Plaza. Thank you so much, DJ Kroba and the other hostess. God bless you so much. Please have a good time. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Clap your hands and give God praise. Give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise.